Hey guys, it's Ethan. Today I wanted to show you how to do an RDTSC uh, KVM patch for your Linux system, whether you're on Gen 2 or any other Linux system. I'm not going to cover how to add your kernel to the bootloader because this is kind of something that you have to do case by case. But the first thing that you want to do is get the source code for your uh, Linux kernel. So I actually have right here, uh, this is the uh, URL you can actually clone it from. You can get just the actual Linux kernel like right from github or you might want to go for your distro specific kernel just depends on what you want to do but we're going to use for now my gen 2 sources kernel so it's going to head inside to the user source linux directory right here i'm going to make this bigger though and what you need to do is uh, it's really easy i'll send a link to this page in the description what you need to do is basically, depending on if you're on AMD or Intel, it changes. So these are the changes for Intel. And what that means is Intel uses the vmx.c file. So if you go into Linux and you're going to use a text editor, whatever, if it's in your slash user source Linux directory, you do need to do this as a root, but regardless. And you basically need to head into the arch x86 kvm and then in this case we're going for the vmx vmx.c file and it's going to tell you what lines you're looking for so the first thing we want to find is setup vmcs config this is the line right here and then we need to add cpu based blah 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 this is the line we want right here so we're going to move on down until we get to here and we're going to add these lines. Basically that's the process for Intel and the tricky part is you want to actually go to KVM VMX exit handler blah 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 and right before this line so right before here is where you want to throw all of this and then save it. And of course, I'm not going to make these changes because I'm not on Intel, I'm on AMD. And for AMD, you want to go to the same directory, but SVM and SVM.C, and basically the same process. So you're going to find the line they're talking about here. So static int const, yeah, SVM handlers right here. And I'm going to make this smaller so that the lines are not looping head down to the bottom and it'll show you some context lines like AVIC unaccelerated you can see that's not there uh, actually unaccelerated is there these looping lines get kind of weird to look at so you would add these new lines right here this one right here underneath it and there is one thing I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly set intercept SVM right here so this line changed when this guide was written it was just set it was just set intercept like it is right here but you actually have to add SVM before it so I'll show you an example of what it looks like I'm obviously not going to save it because I don't want to actually patch my kernel this way I don't need it for anything but if you were to add it you would paste it in and then you'd have to set it to SVM underscore set like this. And I'm going to get rid of that line because I don't actually want it. And then same thing as before, you're looking for static int const. Got to put these slashes after sometimes depending on what the symbol you're typing is there. And then right above this, you're going to add all of this, just copy paste it. And from there, you're going to rebuild your kernel. So I don't actually have to recompile mine, but you would just do your usual make and make modules install and all that. And then you'd boot off of this kernel and this should work fine. But now we have to move on to what we do inside of vert manager, because there's a couple of changes that you need to make to the actual VM. And I should mention that the RDT SCP patch is almost never necessary for like anything but it can mess up other virtual machines. I know that this does work for Windows. It does make the clocks read wrong, but it does work on Windows. 
As for Linux VMs and Mac VMs, I have tested myself and they sometimes don't work. Like sometimes I just can't get a virtual machine to boot when this patch is added. So that's just a little advice. Now you need to add this line right here. Domain QMLNS QEMU. You probably already have this if you have my Windows VM like I did in my guide. You need to have this line move down to the bottom. Set up your QEMU command line like I have here and you need this dash CPU part and you need to basically turn RDT SCP off and KVM off and minus hypervisor. And now what these lines do, first of all, it is relating to the CPU. We're setting it to the host model CPU, disabling RDT SCP. HV under time, underscore time, I think it's like hypervisor time. I don't know what that means. KVM equals off is basically just turning the hidden state of it, like you're making the VM not read as a KVM, from my understanding at least. HV underscore vendor ID is your graphics card's vendor ID. You're setting that just to null, I guess. And the minus hypervisor is the important part. Now, minus hypervisor basically means don't use the... Uh, new advanced hypervisor stuff you need to add this policy to disable aes if you're on amd and then these this rdt scp part is like optional i think because you're already disabling it down here this is just the libvert way of adding these lines but you probably want to have both just as little line of defense so with that all said and done your kernel is basically patched and ready for whatever you might happen to be using a patch like this for if you run paranoid fish, you'll ch you know, you'll pass any check. All right, with that all done, you're ready to go. So if you're maybe testing out some uh, virus or malware that detects virtual machines, you should be able to get past that fairly easily. It is to be said though that this does kill your performance on the virtual machine, disabling this hypervisor part. And while it is necessary to not be seen as a VM, it kills the performance. So just be advised. It's kind of like a trade-off that you have to make at least when i'm on amd performance is terrible but when i was on intel it was pretty good so maybe it's just an amd thing i don't know with that being said i'm gonna see you later bye bye